All right, welcome back. This is part three of our Chase the Pizza Make Code Arcade tutorial. So if you haven't watched part one or part two, please go back and do that. There should be a playlist or a prior video or depending on how you're accessing this video, hopefully you can find parts one and part two. Um, <clears throat> to review from parts one and part two, we set up our player. We set up our sprite, our pizza sprite, our quote unquote enemy or our, our food type really. And if you look at the score there, it's going to town here. Uh, <laughs> because if you notice here, we looked at collision detection. That was the big takeaway from part two. And notice right now our player in our enemy or our player in our food sprite are colliding. And that's what this code down here does. It says every time they collide, subtract one from the score. Well, as you can see, they're colliding. So it's just, it's a constantly subtracting one. Now, if I move my player away from the pizza, it stops. And maybe I change this from a negative one just to a positive one. And so now when I go back and they move, notice it resets. And then I'm getting positive one added to my score. So obviously this is not exactly what we want in our game. But as I challenged you at the end of part two, you could actually make kind of a very simple kind of um, non-traditional game this way. But let's actually make this a little more traditional. Because what we want, if you remember from part one, what we're doing is we're going to move our player on top of the pizza. And when we do, we'll get a point, And then that pizza is going to automatically move somewhere else in a random spot around the screen. And then we'll have a timer as well to make it give us a little bit of sense of urgency. So we have to do all this before the time uh, expires. So that's what we'll finish up in part three. So this will be the final part of the video. So we stopped on step 13. So let's go to step 14. It says let's set the position of pizza to random locations around the screen. So we're going to drag out from sprite, our sprites block, we're going to drag out the set position. And we're going to put that down here in the collision detection. So where this gets, where when it detects the collision, we want to move our pizza to a random spot. So notice right now we get a little error. So this is another example of a bug. And if you remember from parts one and two, we talked about a bug a little bit. A bug is the term we use when there's an error or a mistake in our program. And Make Code, is Arca uh, Make Code Arcade is great because it's going to try to tell us what it thinks is wrong. But remember, a computer code is just giving instructions to a computer. It is not always smart enough to know what we're trying to do, right? But it's trying to give us a hint here. It says returns the value of this variable. Well, that doesn't really help me very much. Basically, what this means is that you can see that little triangle with an exclamation point. And that means there's a, an error, a mistake. And what this says is, hey, we don't have a variable. Hopefully, you remember what a variable is from part two. But remember, a variable is just a place in the computer's memory. We don't have a variable called my sprite. Our variables are called Mike, because that's what I renamed mine. And remember, obviously your name is not probably Mike, so you probably want to change it. And you can rename your variables right here. So you click the little down arrow, and you can rename your vir variable anything you want. You can name it car, hot dog, mosquito, yellow. It doesn't really matter. It's just a way for you to remember. Generally, we name variables for things that are easy or in ways that are easy for us to remember. So I name my player Mike because I'm the player of the game. But obviously, you can rename your variable anything you want. We name this variable here pizza. So we have to say, hey, we don't want to move the my sprite variable. We want to move the pizza variable. We want to move it to a random location. So let's go to step 15. And it's going to say, <coughs> Let's, it's going to tell us how to do that. Okay, so click on the mice spray. Yeah, we already did that, so we kind of I got ahead of us here. Now here we go. So on step 16, we're going to go to the math drawer, right? The math blocks, and we're going to get pick random, and we're going to get a random spot for both our x and our y coordinates. So this is, can be a little tricky the first time you do it. You're going to get this little block, and notice the circle here kind of gets highlighted with this yellowish green color. That means it's in the right spot, and it'll pop in there. And then we want to do that again with another pick random, and this time we want to put it in this one, okay? So let me do that again, and, and by the way, this is a good trick to get rid of a piece of code. You click and drag, and you can move it over here to the trash can. So I'm going to do that process again. I'm going to go to the math drawer, get the math pick random 0 to 10 block. I'm going to get, put that in my x coordinate, and I'm going to get another one for my y coordinate. And now we'll be able to put some random numbers or a range of random numbers in there. So notice what already happened. Our pizza already automatically moved, and that's what we want. It's telling us to put the number, we're going to change this from 10 to 160. You can experiment with different numbers in here. I would encourage you to try different numbers. I believe the total screen is 160 by 160. Um, those, that's the XY coordinates, I believe. Um, 
but you can try different numbers. If you make this number too big, the pizza might not show up because it might show up outside of the range of the screen. So you might want to try different numbers. But this is a good opportunity for you for to try and iterate on your program a little bit. Try and, and change some numbers and see what happens. If you Remember, if you completely mess it up, you can just click and drag, put it in the trash, and kind of start back from uh, where you were before. Okay. So let's go to the last step here, or the second to last step. Now we just want to uh, have, have, add a counter. So to add a counter, we're going to go to the info drawer, and we're going to start countdown in 10 seconds, and we'll put that in there. Okay, so now I believe when we go here to the end, it says congratulations, you're done. So I can go here full screen on my game, and I'm moving around. I get a pizza. Hopefully you see what's happening here. Now, ooh, interesting. The pizza is off the screen. So I have a bug because watch what's going to happen. I can't get the pizza, and so we're going to lose the game here. And we lost. Boo. So I'm going to restart it. There's the pizza. So I definitely need to maybe change the number. There again, the pizza is somewhere off the screen. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change. Let's see if I read this correctly. And I'm glad this happened. I honestly didn't do that on purpose. Yeah, look, I didn't read the directions. Even though I'm doing the tutorial, <laughs> I kind of got ahead of myself. For our Y coordinate, we, the highest value we should be putting in is 120. I put in 160, and remember, I even hinted at that. I said, if that number's too big, it might show up off your screen, and that's exactly what happened. The pizza was over here somewhere, and we couldn't see it, and so therefore our game isn't working. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to fix my bug, put 120 in, and now I'm going to go back to full screen. I'm going to run it, and let's see what high score I can get. Now, if this game is too easy for you, you might do some things like making the countdown faster, or you could even get real complicated and you could every time you get a pizza you could get the maybe the uh, the countdown to go faster each time or you could maybe add in another sprite maybe if you put in like an apple and if you get an apple that's bad right because pizza good apple bad well i don't know about that but you know what i'm saying right like you could put in your own things and then maybe if you pick, get an apple on accident it, it gives you negative points or it counts you down a lot faster there's lots of ways you could change this game up and customize it but Hopefully you got through parts one, two, and three. And if you did, for many of you, this might be the first video game you've ever made. And it's really neat that it, they've kind of made it that simple. Now, with the, a lot of these basic concepts, variables, collision detection, X, Y coordinates, that honestly is, you know, 30, 40, 50% of any professional video game. Now, obviously, to make a professional video game, it takes, you know, hours, months, sometimes years of practice to get to that level. But just through these three videos, and I, you probably spent maybe half an hour total, 20 minutes, you've got a lot of the fundamental building blocks to be, make a video game. Future tutorials, we're going to have more in-depth uh, examples where we maybe start making a maze game or we'll make a, uh, a space shooting game, and we'll kind of increase the complexity of the games that we make. But get this one started. Follow the tutorial. You can either do it right on Make Code Arcade's website, where, like we did, or you can watch my videos to ho hopefully... I, I've added a little extra detail, a little extra context for you. Um, but now try to customize them. That's the next part because it, does really, it doesn't do you a whole good to just go through the tutorial and then stop. Where the real learning comes in is do the tutorial, get it working, and then go in and start customizing to make it the way you want it. That's where you're going to start learning and where your skills will get better and better and better. So have fun.